Hallo. Ähm. Ja. Ich lasse nebenher die ganze Zeit Film laufen, weil man hier nur 18 Minuten hat. So, mach es ein bisschen leiser. Also ich habe angefangen vor... 20 Jahren internationale Werbung zu machen, Fotografie, Commercials und hatte damals mehr Erfolg als erwartet und habe im Prinzip für die ganze Welt große Magen Werbung gemacht und habe das System wirklich von ganz oben kennengelernt, wie eigentlich wir als Weltgesellschaft komplett manipuliert werden und wie alles, was jemand verkaufen will, durch cleveres Kommunizieren wir wirklich schaffen, in die Welt zu bringen. Um, für viele Jahre war das, oh, I'll do it in English actually. For many years this was really interesting to me because it was all about my ego and my life and being pampered up, being a big commercial director, living in first class hotels, having a great life, thinking I'm the coolest. And uh, the more I did it, the more I could look into the system, the more I did understand how things function in this world, the more I felt kind of not really uh, good with what I'm doing, the more I had to question the result of selling billions of shoes or things like this. So six years ago, I actually broke with my career um, in America and said, like, if I'm able to do this for shoes, for Coca-Cola, for cigarettes, for whatever we talk about here, uh, why can't I change that into things I really believe in, into projects and into things I want to communicate instead of just using my talent and be highly, highly paid. $40,000 was my latest rate before I uh, left that place um, and bring all this knowledge of mass manipulation, you can really say, into social consciousness, into things that are really important for the world to change. And I found out that actually from my kind of expertise as a filmmaker, as a commercial director, photographer, artist, there's nothing in the world you can go to say I want to work for free and donate my work. So we realized like as a doctor, you can say like after you made a lot of surgery to women and so on, you think now it's time to do something better, you go to Doctors Without Borders. As a creative person, there's not one NGO in the world you can say I want to work for free. So after I realized that, I started with some people uh, dropping knowledge, another project. And at that time we thought we create an NGO for social communication, social advertisement. Um, but when we started creating an NGO, I got up again looking for sponsors, looking for fundraising. I met again with the corporations I left, trying to convince them to give me millions to do social communication. And they asked for, what's your five years goal, your mission, all this kind of bullshit. And we ended up doing hundreds of proposals, trying to convince Rockefeller or Bill Gates and all this. And they started to ask to tell how we have to do it. Um, so in the first phase, we did this NGO and we created some really good work, but we really realized we are not independent at all. We just shifted our subject into a great subject, but we've been killing ourselves in meetings, how we have to behave, who we have to meet. We made fundraise dinner. We got the best people together, trying to convince them. And at the end, I was really frustrated. I can say after raising four million, and doing a lot of things, I was so exhausted from trying to convince other people that we decided uh, three years ago to stop all this kind of way and say like, whatever we do, we're gonna just do it independently. And it's a really difficult thing talking about independence in the time we live. Everybody does something, needs somebody to realize it. Nobody really can do something by himself. The toilet project needs money, Paloma 5 needs money. Ted needs money, so we all have great ideas and then we spend most of our time just trying like to find people and to do fundraising. Right. And fundraising is a really weird experience. If you need money and you have money yourself, you think like, why not take your own money? So that's what we finally did. We said like, instead of asking other people, we really lower our life. We cut it down much, much, much as possible. We don't pay any fees to anybody. We don't pay anybody for anything. Because once I've been NGO, people rise the price after they heard we, we, we got four million together for fundraising. Everybody had a double bill. Everybody wanted more money. Everybody said like, oh, you have enough money. Any electrician, everybody came. So 
by cutting it down and not being low budget or anything, we said like we are no budget organization. Whatever we do, first we make the money ourselves, then we realize the project. With that shift, actually, we need very little money today, but we work every day on what we want to. And it's a collective, very small, we don't need to grow, we don't want to have hubs in all the world or make it a big organization. We actually decided to be small and just to be an example and let other people copy us or get inspired as trying like to branch out so much. What's the big thing today in the world? So this question with independence really got interesting to me because I realized with the system we in, whatever you do, money is involved. And it's really hard, whatever you do, not to avoid money. And nothing is wrong with money, actually. The question is just like, how does the money feel you deal with? If it's your own money, if it's your own time, if it's my free giving, if I say I work for free, I don't write a bill, I don't need money. If I convince others to do that, um, you get a lot of work power. Work power is the most important thing for a group to do something. That's really like where it happens. And it's really hard to convince people to work for free. Um, especially designers who used to have 800 euro, 1,000 euro, 2,000 euro for doing what they do. And um, so that's where we spend all our time with. So we created films and we decided every film we do, we do it for free. So instead of trying to find distribution and to convince people, and again, you have to do paperwork and you have to present yourself and they say, yeah, this is not commercial enough, this is not this and this and this and this and that. We cut that even out, and so now everything we do is just going copy left on the internet. People download it. This film you see is Chocolate City. We did it three years ago. Launched it on the internet, not holding it on the site. When you come to our site, everything you can download and put it on other servers. Inside of two days, we had four million people watching it. If we would have tried to make this film a commercial project, sending it, uh, selling it to ARD or getting it into a small cinema, 5,000 people would have seen it. So we realized by not trying to be commercial and trying to get as much, as much, because we are not there yet, I can really tell you it's a daily problem, but as much you take it out, people start to realize that and people start actually to feel guilty writing bills to us now. People come and say like, oh, the way you do it, um, let me give that to you. So by being self-sustainable, we realized if we don't do fundraising, if we don't sell anything, we have to go on many feet. So besides doing social communication, we decided to open a nightclub. We have decided to, to cook for people. We are decided, we, we're doing the most strange things now that we do with our own physical time to make money, and this money then we put to finance films again. But the film suddenly, and I come from really high, high budget, crazy world where you spend for one commercial a million, 30 seconds, nothing to look at, but everybody takes a nice piece out of it. So film now we do maybe is a thousand euro budget. We made a whole a movie for 6,000, a summer camp with a hundred people, everybody contributing free time. So suddenly we realized we are not used, and this is where we spend our most time, we are not used to understand that when we free ourselves, and we just give. It's a great experience. It doesn't matter if you do it a minute or an hour or a lifetime. It's a total different freedom. It really makes you independent. It's really like when you help an old woman over the street, you would never ask about anything for that, but you still feel good doing it. So if you make that part of your life and you, you bring that amount higher, and I do that in a moment and I have a little luxury of my past, a career where some savings are left, but I'm now working like the last six years for no clients, for nobody, for no NGO, for nobody telling me how to do it. So everybody we work with, we get really straight people looking in their eyes and people want to deal with us. We say like, either you go eye to eye or you leave the space. And it's really unusual in this society. Let me make this one a little louder.
So um, this film, for example, we did for the GA to raise more awareness around the GA. We created a website, we created a summer camp, we did daily information, we created 120 short films, we did a movie uh, advertisement, crazy, a blog, thousands of free photos and so on. And we had a lot of photographers coming using our camp at the G8 for, um, for the experience of giving the pictures for free, what they usually try to sell. And I think this whole thing now, by freeing yourself, this is a movie we do now. And actually I said enough already, so I give you this Today four minutes where we let people around. talk for us. Running fast through the green valleys, we'll sing and cry and shout. The day the cars will lay in heaps, their wheels turning in vain, we'll run along the empty highways, shouting, screaming, singing. Question 80 from Mike Walters, 28, Madison, Wisconsin, USA. What steps can be immediately taken to prepare all world societies for the pending long emergency associated with the convergence of peak oil, destruction of biodiversity, climate change, poverty, and global disease? You may begin. This is a big question. The problem, of course, with oil is that it's a finite resource, that um, there are limits to uh, its availability, and when demand outstrips supply, um, the price of oil will never return to a low level. It will continue to grow. It may plateau for a while and then continue to grow. I don't know when that moment will, will arrive. Several experts in the oil industry and, and geologists who know about these things think that we're very, very close to that point, and that point technically is called peak oil. Actually, there's not only peak oil, but peak gas as well. Gas is also running out. All the fossil fuels are being depleted. Water is being depleted. How do you prepare people for doomsday? How do you prepare people to wait for the explosion of the bomb that they themselves set in place? There's nothing you and I we can do to stop the global warming. The ice is going to carry melting away. And now the matter is who will live? Who will live with a life worth living? We know that many will perish. I used my last three minutes, not watching too much movie. So what we do is just like trying to lower all the needs you have that you really can spread much more that space. And um, interestingly, we do this now for six years. We do it now with the no money level since three years. This is part of the Dropping Knowledge Project also. And I'm really surprised myself. If you take out all the needs you need usually to create your projects with others, to get funding, to get financing, to get distribution, big thing for an artist, um, everything suddenly becomes possible when you just believe in yourself and the own independence. Today the world is in a moment where everything, anything is cracking. Music business is fucked up, film business is fucked up, advertisement business will be fucked up soon too. Capitalism is fucked up, hey, hey. So now suddenly all the structures uh, are gone and suddenly you can create a new information, new thinking, and you can really reach a lot of you. TEDx is a great, great example, same spirit in a way. Yeah? And um, to be aware of being independent, I think especially for my generation, is so important. We all raised by being used to money, by being used to money of parents, of others, by needing, by needing, by needing, by needing. We are not grown up or we are not empowered to see ourselves as a source of strength, to see our own money as our money we can do things with. 
The moment you reduce your life, you have so much time left, you have so much money left, you have so much space left. I'm talking for Westerner here. I'm not talking for people somewhere in the world. I'm talking for people like us. And um, this freedom of, of cutting out of all this, it creates so many new ideas because you don't have to, you don't have to ask. You try, you may fail, you may not do the best, but it's yours and it's your own ownership, it's your own words, your own saying. I think it's so important for our generation to have our voice and not to please, not to please anybody who gives you the money. Because the moment you take money of others, you're not independent. And independence is a much bigger theme as what I talk about. But for me as a creative person, I really realized I was working 20 years for the industry to selling my soul and never being really happy with the outcome. And this is the first time, and I think I'm a bit talented, where I feel the talent makes me become somebody else. So, thank you very much. There's 25 seconds left for Toscani.